Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about equations with exponents on them. Equations with exponents are going to look something like this. <clears throat> x squared equals 25. First thing I want you to write down is what that means in words. And that means a number that we don't know yet squared is equal to 25. So they want to know what that number is. Just like we did when we solved regular equations, we need to do the opposite thing to both sides to get our answer. But now we have to think, what is the opposite of squaring a number? And the answer to that would be taking the square root. So the opposite of squaring a number is actually taking the square root of the number. So when I see something like this, the thing I need to do to both sides is take the square root. That's the symbol that looks like this, the radical symbol. I do that because the square root of x squared just gives us the x that we were looking for. It isolates the variable. The square root of 25 is positive 5, but it's also another number. 5 times 5 gives us 25, but so does negative 5 times negative 5. So that actually gives us two answers to this question, and the way we write it out is x is equal to plus or minus 5, because the two there's two possible answers here. There's positive 5 times positive 5, which gives us 25, and there's negative 5 times negative 5 which gives us positive 25. Another example would be y squared equals 100. In words, that means a number squared is equal to positive 100. So again, we need to ask ourselves, what's the opposite of squaring a number? And that was taking the square root of it. So to solve this, all we need to do is take the square root of both sides. The square root of y squared is just y, and the number times itself that gives you 100 is 10, but it's also negative 10, because 10 times negative 10, or negative 10 times negative 10 is also positive 100. So these always have those two answers. They have a plus and a negative answer for square root numbers. Okay, in the next example, there's a little bit of a tricky situation here that you have to think about. Z squared is equal to negative 64. That means a number squared is equal to negative 64. A number times itself is equal to negative 64. This is impossible. It can't happen. There's no number in the whole world that you can multiply by itself to get a negative answer because two of the same signs gives you a positive answer. A positive times a positive is a positive and a negative times a negative is a positive. So it, there is no world where we can solve this equation. So we call this a no solution. If you were to put this in your calculator, and I will have a separate video just quickly showing you how to put everything in your calculator, you would get error because it just can't happen. And that's why we call it no solution. All right, so that's it for squaring numbers, sort of, that we'll add to it a little bit to it in the next video, but the next video will be about cubing numbers and cube roots of numbers. Okay, so in this video, we'll talk a little about, about exponents that have cubes in them and what our answers may look like for these. So it's the same kind of process. We want to kind of ask ourselves what they're saying in words, and that is a number cubed, a number times itself, times itself again is equal to 343. So to solve this, we have to ask ourselves, what's the opposite of cubing a number? And that would be taking the cube root. 
of a number. So that is what we need to do to solve this equation. We need to take the cube root of both sides. To show that we're taking the cube root of both sides, we use the radical sign with a three next to it. The cube root of x cubed is just x. That was our goal. And the cube root of 343, you could use your list of perfect cubes to answer this question or you can just put it in your calculator. Like I said, there'll be an intro video of how to put this all in your calculator. The cube root of 343 is positive seven. Positive seven is the only answer in the world that could work there because seven times seven times seven again is positive 343, but negative seven times negative seven times negative seven actually gives us negative 343 because negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49 times negative 7 positive times a negative is a negative so that's why that's the only correct answer for that one and the next one it's going to be a very similar example but we need to kind of think about what's happening here this is a number cubed is equal to negative 1,000. This one's not going to be a no solution problem. If you put this in your calculator correctly, negative 1,000 with the cube root, you would have no issue. It would tell you an answer straight away. And that's because the opposite of cubing a number is taking the cube root of both sides. Like I said, that's in the other video. The cube root of negative 1,000 is negative 10, because that's actually the thing that you can multiply by itself three times to get negative 1,000. Negative 10 times negative 10 is 100, and 100 times negative 10 is negative 1,000. So when we take the square root of both sides, we get no solution. When we take the cube root of both sides, we have a solution. And these are the only correct answers for these responses. Okay, now we're going to see some equations that you're slightly more used to seeing, so there are going to be some extra steps. Before we can do anything to both sides with squaring a number, we need to isolate this whole term. And the thing that's stopping that from being isolated is this plus so we're actually going to subtract 10 from both sides. And we get z squared equals 36. At this step, I have a number squared equals 36, so that's when I take the square root of both sides. I know to take the square root when I see the little 2. I know to take the cube root when I see the 3. And this would give us z equals positive 6. <clears throat> Actually, it would give us plus or minus 6. Since it's a square root, it can be 6 times 6, which gives us 36, or negative 6 times negative 6, which gives us 36. Okay, on the next slide, I'm actually going to have you try some problems on your own. So you'll pause the video now, and you will try these questions. When you're done, you'll check back with me and I'll be going over the answers. So the first one, we've got x squared is equal to 225. So we take the square root of both sides to get x equals positive 15 or negative 15. Either one would work when we're squaring a number, taking the square root of one. The next one's also a square root. But because we have the square root of negative 144, that just can't happen. It, there's no world because 
negative 12 times negative 12 isn't negative 144, it's positive 144. A number times itself will always give you a positive number. This one's actually no solution. The next one is the cube root of eight. So we would take the cube root of both sides and we would get x is equal to two because that's the number that is times by itself all those times to get to two. The next one, we would take the cube root of both sides again. Because I'm taking the cube root of negative 27, this should work out to give me x equals negative three. This one's not going to give you a pretty answer, so we'll add 8 to both sides. z squared equals 80. If I square both sides, I would get z is equal to plus or minus. It's in between the square root of 8, which is 64, and 9, which is 81 and it's a little bit closer to the 9, so it would actually give you 8.9. That would be the approximate value it would have. Even if you put that in the calculator, you would get 8.9 something, 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 and if you rounded it to the nearest tenth, you would get 8.9. Next one, we subtract 10 first, and we get y cubed equals negative 64. Be very, very careful about what you bring down. That's going to tell you what to do to both sides. And in this case, I would take the cube root of both sides to get y equals negative 4. Negative 4 is the only number that you can multiply by itself three times to get negative 64. The next one, we would subtract 4 from both sides. And we would get a squared equals negative 121. Well, if I took the both square root of both sides there, I would have a negative answer, and that would not work for me in a square. So that's a no solution again. Final one, we would subtract 6 from both sides, and we would have b cubed equals. 512, take the cube root of both sides to get that b is equal to 8. Positive 8 is the only possible answer that works there. If I did negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8, I would get negative 512. Okay, that is it. I will either have a second video with how to put these in the calculator or I'll kind of chop them in as I go.